Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. Today is Saturday. Uh, my guest artist is Roma Oshowo and I can't wait for you guys to meet her. She is here and I'm going to bring her in so she can tell you all about her and her background and her amazing um, work that she has been doing and she's just going to tell us her story. Hey, Roma, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, is my head being cut off? A little bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll go back a little bit. Um, or tilt the camera up a little bit. Okay, let's see if that works. There we go. <laughs> Welcome, Roma. I'm so Thank excited you. that you are joining my army of artists here in Tap Into Your Creativity. I um, love your work. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of your soul. Um, you and I have conversed a um, little bit, but we have so much in common. Uh, yeah. We're both immigrants. We are both abstract um, uh, painters, contemporary painters, and um, we are hard at work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes, I love uh, catching up with you, and you're right. We have so much in common. I love it. Yes. So, Roma, tell us a little bit about your name, who you are, um, where were you born, and um, just a little bit about you. Sure. So, my name is Roma Oshowo. Um, I was born in the British Virgin Islands, and so... When you say, when you ask me where I'm from, I say the British Virgin Islands. <laughs> um, I was born and raised there and moved to the U.S. when I was 16. So I'm an immigrant, um, been living here for many, many years, more than half of my life now. Um, but I try to go home pretty often because that's where the majority of my influence comes from. So, and I'm an abstract painter. I love color, um, <laughs> slightly obsessed with color. It just makes me happy. So that's a big part of who I am and what I do. I know um, you and I talked briefly about how, you know, colors and smells and even fruits and flowers and everything that we grew up, uh, you know, in our countries, uh, mm -hmm. we kind of bring it into our painting. And, uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But sure. so how old were you when you moved into the United States? I was 16. I was 16. I know, crazy. I, we, fin we, we, like in the British Virgin Islands, we have a, a British school system. So we, like, I, we finished a little earlier than uh, high school, earlier than you do here in the US. So I had just finished high school and I had this big plan <laughs> that somehow my mom agreed to. <laughs> so I was moving to New York and I, I, I had a job lined up. It was crazy. I was, I had a receptionist job lined up and I, I started community college. So that was my first introduction to living in the US. And I loved it because I feel like New York is just so uh, expressive. And I think as an artist, I connected to being there. So when you were growing up, did you have an idea that this was going to be your path? That, you know, painting mm. was going to be in your That's, hey, a really, that's a really good question. I painted as a kid. I was always like really crafty. And my mom would buy me like craft paints. Um, and it's funny because I don't recall this at all. But one of my uh, longtime childhood friends told me about a year ago that when we were 11, I told her I was going to be an artist. And I'm like, I did? Like, I have no memory, oh, <laughs> no wow. memory of that. Um, so I think it was something I loved, but I didn't think it was realistic. Um, we have some prolific artists back in the Virgin Islands, but in terms of making it a full-time career, it's just not something that I thought was feasible. And so coming from a family that's filled with entrepreneurs, I sort of went into business, I studied marketing. And so, you know, the art sort of went on the back burner a bit when I got a little older. So it's interesting. Um, are there any artists now in the British islands that you, yes. yes. There, there's, there are many artists, um, some not full-time. Um, there is, I forgot his first name, but there's a gentleman, um, his last name is Vantapool. He actually lives pretty close to my mom's house back home. 
and he paints murals. His work is fabulous, but there are many artists back home. I'm not sure in terms of how many are full-time, but we have such a creative community back home that on all levels, there are artists that express themselves. And um, I mean, that's, that's really cool. I, you know, that's, I, I always keep going back to my homeland and trying mm -hmm. to connect with the artist community there. Yeah. And that's the way for me to, you know, keep that connection going. And um, I wanted to ask you, because I know that you married a physician and I married a physician. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. can we um, fast forward a little bit as to you did a marketing um, degree, right? Yeah. Um, so then what happened after that? Did you get married after that or? Yeah. So I, my time in the U.S. sort of started in New York. I ended up um, moving to Tallahassee, Florida. I had two sisters there um, attending university. And then I finished my schooling at the, it's called La Inter University in Puerto Rico. And oh. so if you're familiar with the Caribbean, it's just like a 20 minute flight from the Virgin Islands. Yeah. So I was home a lot in my last one and a half years of college. So my husband is actually from Nigeria. And so he was just, he had been living on my island for a couple of years, but I had never met him. So it was on one of those like weekend trips. Cause <laughs> if you know anything about Puerto Rico, they have like a holiday for everything. So it was like a long weekend. I went home and I ended up in the emergency room with my <laughs> nephew. And okay. that's how I met. He came out and I thought, like, this is a child. Like, who, like, <laughs> where is the real doctor? Because he looks so young. So that's how we met, like, on a long weekend. And I just knew that I was, I, I kind of joked when I went back to my mom's store. Like, I just met the man I'm going to marry. And we all, like, cracked up. Um, oh my god I said the same thing the day really? I met my husband that yes. happened, so that happened and it wasn't until our wedding day that I found out that that night he told his roommate the same thing so it was meant to be even though like I didn't have his number <laughs> I left the you know I left with no contact of him and I went back to Puerto Rico but a couple weeks later my sister returned with my nephew to like go back for a follow-up and he was like, where's his mom? Like, he thought I was the mom because my sister wasn't there in the ER. And I'm like, uh, my sister is like, the guy, the doctor, he's asking for you. <laughs> so that's kind of how we reconnected. Oh, my gosh. And um, so was he in medical school then? No. So he was a practicing um, ER physician then. So he went to medical school in Nigeria and in uh, the British system again. So in Nigeria, it's also a form of British uh, territory. Um, and their medical school is followed British guidelines. So you can, after medical school in the UK, you can practice as a general physician, as opposed to in the US, you have to go to residency. So he was practicing in the ER when I met him. And then we, we got married about 18 months after we met and he came to the u.s to do residency okay so that's when you moved together right at that yeah point. so yeah okay. we've, and yeah we've lived in a few states but we we started off in upstate new york <laughs> i went back to new york but it was rochester then we moved to arizona and then finally texas so now you're in dallas correct now we're in the suburbs of dallas yeah yes and how do you think has corona um affected you in your work in um have you been able to paint do you paint in your home um what is this yeah, looking so like for you for me i always i've always painted at home i used to paint in my garage when i started um just because it was like everywhere was already set up and then i'm like making a mess right so i i started in our garage oh before we actually go into that yeah. You really started professionally painting and going for it only three years ago. We have to make yeah. a note of that because, yeah. you know, people think that you, you know, maybe you had a whole career and this whole, you yeah. know, years no, of experience. No. And yeah. so, so I want you just briefly to talk about that because I missed sure. I missed that part. I'm so, sorry. That's okay. So my background is actually in marketing and I did quite a bit of work in that. Um, and... At some point after having my son, I felt really compelled to stay home. So I was a stay-at-home mom for like many years. And 
when you're a creative person, you always are doing something. <laughs> you're like, well, let me make earrings and let me do this and do that. And so even though I was at home and I felt fulfilled taking care of them, I always like would have this urgency inside of me like there's something you're supposed to be doing and I could not I had that was a prayer that I had with my husband for a very long time we would go to go to bed before we go to bed that's the prayer like Lord reveal what you have her to do what you would have Roma to do and so that answer to prayer came December 2016 my husband was like you used to paint what happened and I'm like I don't know that's so weird it just you have kids you get busy and you, you know, as a mom, you know this, you start taking care of everybody else and then you kind of go to the wayside, right? Yeah. And so I went to buy some paint and that was it. Like within two weeks, my husband came home and he was like, this is what you're supposed to do. And at that time, everything I painted was hideous. So I'm <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I'm just having a good time. And he's like, no, I don't care what you need to do, what classes you want to take. Like, I am so absolutely sure you need to go for it. And so, and eventually I believed it myself. Um, and so, yeah, 2017, if you scroll all the way back on my feed, you'll see my very first post. I, I was a very private person. I'm like, well, I can't really sell this stuff if I'm super private, right? There's, you, I mean, I have to apply my marketing side. Um, and so, yeah, um, 2017, sort of like, I think April, May, somewhere there, I was like, I'm going to do this and figure it out as I go along. So, and did you start on social media right away or did you start on your own or? So it's funny what, what kind of pushed me to starting to sell? Cause I was making and I was keeping it hidden. And I, and I suspect a lot of aspiring artists are like that. They're like, I create, but I'm afraid to show this stuff. Um, and what happened um, in September, I think it was, I can't remember, 2017, um, Hurricanes Maria and Irma hit the Caribbean and devastated my islands. And I had, I had, I mean, it was insane. My, my niece and nephew came to live with me. My mom's lost her roof. My sister's house was destroyed. It was just oh, I'm so, so sorry. much people had wow. so much loss. It was yeah. just inconceivable. And um, there were people that were homeless. There were people that were in so much need. And so I had all these paintings and I felt this conviction, like you need to try to make money with this and just try to help people. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So it started on Facebook where I had more, you know, friends there. And I started showing like, and saying, I want to do this. I want to raise money. And I'm like, is anybody going to pay for this? And I sold, I raised over $2,000. I helped two families. Wow. And so that was the start where I'm like, there was, you know, confirmation, like people would spend money for what I'm creating. And so that gave me a push to like, keep going and then start to really pursue it. Wow. And, and we will talk later when you give us tips and, and sure. lessons um, on how to, for people that, you know, were in that situation now, how do you grow that following? How do you use social media for your benefit? Sure. Cause you are, you have done really well on that. Um, so now we can talk about Corona and um, sure and the times that we're living right now. Um, is has it affected your your painting? Have you been able to continue painting? What what does that look like for you? Um, it's you know there some days are better than some, but I have committed to having this as a practice. So there there's there's been probably just one day throughout this period where I like I couldn't bring myself to paint and you know it's been corona along with you know racial injustice there have been so many things that have kind of just been heavy um and so many people have had to deal with and so um yeah it was during that time of when the George Floyd video came out um that next morning I that was the only day that I could not paint like I literally couldn't lift my hands. I, I just felt paralyzed and just really frozen, just really. And so um, if you go back on my feed, you know, what I did that day, I sort of gessoed over a, a, a four foot by four foot painting and I spray painted, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, because that was just, I just felt like I was suffocating and there was, it was just so heavy. Um, and my spirit was heavy and I felt like I, I struggled with whether to communicate and share that um, but eventually I did. 
did, did that make you feel better once you were able to put it out there? Yeah, I mean, you, it's interesting because you see people sort of push for um, racial justice and you see, you, you feel as a person of color, a brown or, or black person, you feel the weight of people who impose their beliefs that there's nothing wrong. And so you actually walk through this. This is, this is my personal experience. You know, I have to look at my son and, and think and worry about things um, that, that some people don't. It's just the truth. And so to see people sort of diminish your own experience that they likely will never have to deal with, it's, it, it, it's been difficult. So for me personally, I don't, I talk about it when I feel really pushed to, but it's not, thank God there are people who talk about this and that's their platform and that's what they do. I can't personally, I can touch on it when I feel like really strongly convicted to, but I choose to just invoke joy and kind of combat a lot of what is happening right now, just culturally, politically, with just putting, uh, beauty into the world and and you you have i mean and and i think also you and i talked about um people don't ask you either they don't know how to ask they yeah. they feel either embarrassed or yeah. they just you know they they can't feel what you're feeling and um so it's a hard question to ask it's a hard place to be um yeah. But, you know, like I've said before, we're in a place where we just have to listen and learn. Sure. And um, by doing that, I think we can all become better people and um, have a little more respect and patience for one another. Yeah. And just listen, you know? Yeah, and absolutely. I think the, the progress comes in the one-on-ones, one um, you know, because so many of us are guided by our own past our own experiences our family belief systems and so but sometimes just having a conversation one-on-one -on -one where you can't you can't deny this person's uh existence right you can't deny this person's experience because it's palpable in their face you know and not you know behind a computer screen or something like that um so i think the one-on-ones which is hard now obviously with everything um, but that's where change really happens. Yeah. And also you said, you know, you got a lot of traction because of, um, of yeah, I can situation. show you. Yeah. Because I mean, I told the story of what immediately came to me, um, when I saw the video was really my son. Um, and there was a video that I found on my phone. I didn't even know if my son did this. My son likes to dance. He's 14, but he's probably as tall as an 18, 19 year old. Um, and I found a video on my phone just a few days prior to the George Floyd video coming out. Um, and my son was dancing in my front yard. He had on a black hoodie, hood up, and he had on a black face mask. And I saw the video and I freaked out because I'm thinking like, somebody could have seen him and just had the wrong thought in a split second, right? And so, you know, I really, that is what to me it's very personal um you know when i see when i see what happens um especially to black and brown men women too but especially men um i have to think about my husband i have to think about my son in a way that someone who's not in my shoes cannot relate to one and and you and i you told me this story yesterday and i started to bawl because yeah. i have a son um and i would never think twice if he's wearing a hoodie outside yeah, you know, and um, it, it just just went straight into my heart because the thought that you have to always be thinking three steps ahead. Yeah, um, is is exhausting. Yeah, it's it's and it shouldn't be. Yeah, it just shouldn't be. That's the right word. It, it can be exhausting. But you know, and and also tr training him up and my both kids to be joyful in spite of the challenges, right? So we're not gonna wear that on our sleeves. We're not gonna walk around like, woe is me. We're not gonna walk around asking for handouts or, or help me because no. Um, so I am raising them up to be the exception. And so, um, and to be just good human beings, right? 100%. Um, and some, you know, and unfortunately in some of these incidents, that, that's not enough, um, but 
we can only do what we can con what we can control and put beauty and 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 goodness and kindness out into the world 100 and like you said it starts with one person affecting the other one in the right way yeah. and from then hopefully will be a chain reaction yeah and um and like you said you mean you've been practicing for the last three years you've been present and so it's not like all of a sudden like oh i've been discovered because of what happened right you know because you were saying like you you know a lot of black artists got a lot of traction because yeah. of that but you were yeah. like but i've been here <laughs> yes and so it's an interesting um dynamic because you're grateful that somebody you know saw your work and thought i'm gonna like share what she's doing but it's also you know i think you wish that people are a little bit more conscious about making sure their feeds are diverse and what they consume is diverse um because just those implicit biases you know they they, they all of us they kind of sometimes will push us in the way that everything looks like me, everything sounds like me, everything, you know, and so, and then in this industry, you know this, men already sort of dominate in terms of who's in a museum and whose work is, gets all these accolades. And then there's women, and then there are women of color who are probably on the lowest uh, totem pole. Um, and, you know, that it makes it more difficult to be sort of on an even playing field. But what is interesting, too, is that, um, and you and I have talked about this, is, you know, when you, when you put your art out on the world on social media, nobody knows the color of your skin, right? Yes. They just like it because they like it, yes. you know? Or, yes. or they don't because That's they don't. That's why abstract art, it's a great equalizer in that you, you exactly. probably have to, you, you could maybe feel something about the person's soul um, right. when you look at it. But in terms of the color of their skin, you have no clue. And, and I, you know, and, and I feel like as human beings, we should always look at everyone as a painting, Absolutely. you know, because then there's no judgment. Absolutely. It's just, you know, it's just the beauty of your soul coming through. So yeah. um, with that being said, um, I know that uh, you um, have some work that you're going to be showing us around. Mm -hmm. um, and just tell us a little bit about your space, because I know you're not in your usual space. So tell us, how yeah, is that now? I, yeah, and, um, you know, I sort of graduated. <laughs> we moved recently, and we're just temporarily here. Um, hi, I'm seeing some people saying hi. Yes, but, um, I, I'm trying to turn them on and then turn them off so we can see your okay, beautiful face. Okay. And, um <laughs> So I'm um, in a temporary space, even though like, I really liked my garage, except in the summers, it got really hot. <laughs> and like, just really icky. But I'm I have human. To, yeah, but my, you know, your husband's a physician too, he'll be gone. And so I have like a two car garage and like, I would have like my big old paintings on the floor and it was amazing. <laughs> and now I'm like, you know, like a 12 by 10 room. And so <laughs> It's rough. So you have to get creative about like, and we're not staying. We're just here looking for another house. So I can't like really get it messy. So it's hard. It's really, really hard. But um, it's beautiful because it's, I'm like, wow. So this is what's, what it's like to be in AC all the whole time. <laughs> um, it's just like luxurious. So um, there are definitely blessings in being here. And um, even though it's a small tight space, but it's, it's, it has, beautiful light i used to struggle in my garage to like i can picture. see that i can see your yeah. you know, the so light is, is like this shining is like, you. I yeah i graduated okay so i'm like now my standards for light is like woo, like that's all <laughs> when we go looking at houses that's like the light in this house is just it's not going <laughs> so yeah so um yeah but i'm in a in i got my own room and so that's great so i can show you a little bit of how it's set yeah. up yeah why don't you take your phone from sure. uh, the tripod and um give us a little tour of what we're going to see okay so right here i have like sort of one Station, station. That I'm mixing. I, I kind of keep track of my commissions and I keep my uh, essential oils going. <laughs> Very <laughs> important. And I kind of cleaned up for you guys because this is. Just, wow, you did a great job. Yeah. It's I'm def impressed. Definitely not the way it always looks. Um, and here I kind of br brought some work out. 
Wow. Okay. Let's focus on, on, on one and, and okay. kind of start talking. So I'll just show you really quickly. This was the piece that I think, I, I guess you would say went viral. Um, um, I had an underpainting and I just sort of gessoed it and I was just, it was just getting all my emotions out there. So I brought it in to show you because we talked about it. Yeah, um, it kind of looks like tears coming down too. That was know? the whole, that was the whole point of like this, it's not stopping, you know, like I, it, the point and it, it runs off the page uh, in that corner because the, the, the idea is, I wish I could stop saying it. I wish I could stop hearing it, right? Um, but it just continues. Um, and so it's just sad. Did you, you know? did you do that with spray paint? I did it with spray paint. I have yeah. a ton of spray paint I use a lot, um, and especially smaller pieces. But yeah, that was, that was all spray paint. That was all I could do, Sandra, because that Yeah, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm wondering, because, yes, you know, I that's couldn't... much easier than grabbing, you know, yes. a, I you know to, to I have to really, really think about putting your yes. water out and your brushes out and whatever. Yes. This is just an, ins it was like, your reaction, your gut reaction. Yes. And so it's very special to me. Um, so, and it's heavy as well, but yeah. So that, that's the piece I was referring to. But that it's interesting, I have... uh, Roma, mm -hmm. because you still have color in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely can't leave, you know, the waters of my islands. People are like, how do you mix those blues? I'm like, I don't know. Like they're just, I, I love blues and I love teals and turquoises. And so they're a big deal to me in terms of most of the time you're going to see some of it somewhere or, or a lot of it um, in yeah. my work. Yeah. yeah. It's a very, very impactful, um, incredible piece. I mean, I just Thank see you. your tears coming through, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So um, I have, this is a work in progress. Um, but I, I think, you know, people know me for liking pattern and um, little shapes, like unique sort of shapes. And so this, I still have to pull some of, you know, the shapes back forward in, in certain areas. Yes. But I wanted to sort of start to include some white space. Um, but yeah, I love, again, the blue. <laughs> I can't stop. Yeah. So, yeah, that's like a work in progress. I showed this recently on my um, Instagram, but, and we'll do a demo in a little bit um, of how to start one like this, but the florals, I occasionally, I, I don't consider myself like a floral artist, but occasionally I feel like, you know, sometimes I just have the urge and I just go for it. Like I, I feel like painting flowers today. Right. Um, and it still feels very, you know, uh, as a non-objective, but it does feel like it's nature-based abstraction. Right. Right, right. And I, what I love about abstraction is it doesn't have to be realistic. It doesn't have to, it just gives the essence of flowers. And that's enough for me. That's what I like. I don't like the super hyper realistic. I love to see them, but I don't like to make them or, necessarily. Or like, yeah, yeah. Like, perfect. I understand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so here, I just kind of snuck this in here. Um, but again, sort of like, mixing the the wilder sort of like unpredictability with some pattern um so this is a 12 by 12 on wood yeah and then did you just frame it did you float it this is a, i just popped it in here it's not it's not complete yet i'm still okay. sort of like i put it into sort of this is a good tip like to look at the work either like put a mat around it if it's paper or if you have a frame, I have like a bunch of, I take photos that sometimes you see on my feed, but it's just like, I just have a few white frames, especially in different sizes so I can see my work and kind of and, get it. And you know what else you can use with the, with the paper um, frames is you make different sizes and even in a long, in a big painting, mm -hmm. if you're really liking what's happening in, in one area, if you cover the rest and just leave that, yeah. Maybe that informs you to go to your next painting. So it's sure. a great thing to have, you know, nearby. Sure. Yeah. So this is really, um, I'm really liking this um, yeah. and the direction of that. And then yeah. probably one of my more popular styles is the Be Happy, um, which is really named after, 
I have a friend named Bree and her mom passed a couple years ago. And her mom always used to just say, be happy, be happy. Like, and, oh. and it, it's just a, a, another way to say choose joy right yes um, yes so did you put resin on top of that yes so um the ones i do on paper don't have resin but the ones on canvas um i resin just the top layer the side is not resin okay um so i sort of how mastered do you keep, how to how do you do that the, and i love how do you it. keep the sides um from not did i spreading the oh okay. sorry how okay. do you keep the sides of the canvas um, so it, the resin doesn't go into the sides? Yeah, so this right here is called frock tape. Yeah. I used to use blue tape, um, and then I don't know why, I just prefer frock tape. I think it's just a little bit more precise. Yeah. And so, honestly, you just tape the sides. This takes a little bit of uh, precision, okay. but you're, you're being super careful that you're like right at that tippy edge where the curve meets the flat. Because if you if you look at it, you see it's it's very sort of precise. Yes, I want is. that clean finish. Yes. Um, to it. Yeah. So once you I love it, I love that. Maybe you, you have some resin, um, the resin that you use, so you can show us the brand that you use. I don't have any because I don't keep okay. it up here. But it's Art Resin. The brand is called Art Resin. Okay. Um, and it's the the. I believe it's the most non-toxic brand on the market. So okay. the, when I started off, uh, the, I can't remember the name, but there was a brand I used and oh my gosh, like my throat would burn. And it, Do yeah. you have to mix it? Is it a thing that you mix? Yes, it's, yes. it's two parts and you mix it for three minutes. Okay. Um, and after that, it's clear, there's some bubbles in it. So the process is basically you mix, you kind of have to get your painting on an even surface elevated off of the floor or the ground Correct. Um, because you're going to have drips coming off the side. So you got to like prepare your floor with plastic um, and then you pour the resin. So there's a calculator on that website that helps you based on the size of your piece. Know okay. exactly how much ounces you're mixing of each side, right? Okay. And then when the resin pours, it kind of creates these air bubbles. Um, so that's the part that most people hate, to be honest. Um, yeah, you have to use heat, don't you? You have to use heat. I'm trying to find my little blowtorch, it's here. Um, but just a little kitchen blowtorch. Um, yeah. just, it, it, you don't need a lot of impact to kind of blow them out. So this is kind of a big job for me when I do it. I try to do three or four at, at a time because it's, I don't do this every day, right? And you have and, to cover it somehow so the dust doesn't... Yes. So be, yes, exactly. So it's, I usually charge a little bit more for these pieces because art resin is expensive. It takes extra time and care, but the impact is so beautiful. Um, it is. It's I beautiful. Personally, yeah. I, I like that look for my own style and my own home. So I know, you know, there's that contemporary vibe that it kind of fits. Yeah. And you have that rhythm and repetition and this very vertical lines um, yes. that you have created, you know, a lot of layers with a lot of colors and so I think that you have that on on the one on the left too the one that you the yeah. that big one um, so the big, um, big, yeah, like, that one yeah so this is more current where I'm like looping the lines and sort of like <laughs> messing with your brain but um I like line work obviously um I like pattern I like sort of um playing with color and making sure like how does this harmonize so this is this is probably about 70% finished. Um, yeah, and, and you can, you know, it's funny because like you said, you're playing with your brain. Of course you are because you're trying to find, you know, where the, where the line starts. And then if you follow that, you want to kind of find the end of it. But there's yes. really no end for it. No, and, so, and it's kind of like for me, I approach it like it's like you're, you're not putting together a puzzle. Right. <laughs> you're like you're doing it in reverse. Exactly. Like, how do I confuse people? So like, <laughs> you're the person creating the puzzle, right? Right, not, exactly. But, but you have that, like I said, you have a rhythm because when you repeat the same um, mark, um, mm -hmm. mark making, um, there is that language of symbolism of um, non-abstract 
um, yeah. work, you know, of, um, it kind of just tricks your mind and yeah. it just, and you, you go in and out depending on the value of the color. So, yes, yes. Um, and I like, and, and I, and I like with these to create that feeling of movement. So even though it's a still piece, you, you get the vibe of like, this is blowing in the wind, you know, like, oh, like, you know, these are still but they're moving um yeah so but they're not really still still you mean by a two-dimensional um painting but they they have all that energy and movement so mm -hmm. you kind of are dancing with them and moving mm -hmm. with them um so you know so what you're pretty you know you're pretty much saying is like a two-dimensional can transform to a three-dimensional right right you know you're looking at a still painting but yes. there's so much movement that you yes. your imagination can go where it's taking you exactly exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then i know you have a little wall of uh paintings that your son did oh and yeah so yeah. i think it's so cool that that you he, um, um Hang on, let me move this a second. Okay. He um, <laughs> he would say, no, you're fine. He would say, I can't paint. I'm not creative. Like, my daughter is super creative. But he did this in, I think it was first grade. So and we found them when we moved. And I was like, oh, look. It's so, so, they're so cool. Yeah, I thought, oh, that's a great so way to display your kids' work. Yeah. So he's like, I can't believe you put that up in there. I'm like, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yes, for sure. Um, so where do you like to paint the most? On an easel, on a wall, on the floor, on a table? Um, it depends on what I'm painting. So I have like th this size is a 48 by 72. So this just has to go. Um, and thanks, I, I'm keeping it vertical, honestly, because it's just hard in here to sort of twist stuff around. Usually, I just brought these things in for here for you, right. but usually I, I you try don't to keep it them. clear. Yeah. So I'm usually like the last two weeks I've been working on this, and um, and I have like one on the easel or rotating a few on the easel. So okay. I work like that, and then my smaller pieces. I have a workstation here, and then I have another station where I can mix over here. But paper pieces, I tend to stay here. Yeah. Um, and work sort of flat. Can you show us that wall? With this it? one? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to build up my little um, inspiration wall. I just yeah. got started. But yeah, color. And I love bougainvilleas. Um, oh, I pattern. love bougainvilleas. Mexico is filled with oh, them. They're my, they're my oh. favorite. As well as um, flamboyant trees. I don't know if you guys have those in Mexico. Um, I don't know Mexico. if we have flamboyant, but bougainvilleas is like they're what the 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 true color of a bougainvillea. It's a rosa mexicano. That's what we call it. Ah, it's yeah, like, I love. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, that as a kid. I would that is like just... it's so vibrant and beautiful, and you know. So if you don't know what a bougainvillea is, please find Look it, it somewhere. Look it up. They have exactly. Them in, um, they have a lot in Miami and California, like warm climates. Warm weathers, love them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so uh, let's just briefly talk about the work that you're doing for this project. You have sure. it right there, right? Yes, I have one. I have it here. Oh, let me back up a little bit. Yay. Yeah. So you guys, this painting, My Roma, is going to go for the Art COVID project. So mm -hmm. if you're interested, um, you can purchase it today for $350 that will go 100% for Feeding America. So $350, it's an equivalent of 3,500 meals. So if you are considering to um, make a purchase in art, why don't you make a purchase and help so many people in need right now that they need food so let's work together. Let's sell this piece today. You can private message me or private me message Roma. And um, let's do this together. I need you guys to help me and Roma uh, and my artists, uh, my army of artists to keep yeah. going. We have raised almost $16,000. Wow. And um, it's incredible. We've helped so many people in need. So we just need your help. And we just need to continue um, helping people. Yeah. Yay! So, so yeah, <laughs> that's from my like color dot series, which people 
they always say it looks like confetti it looks like yesterday someone said it. they look like jellyfish i was like i love it because it's all good things <laughs> you know, exactly. like, like sprinkles like just joy right exactly so, exactly yeah. so we're gonna do a demo but before we do the demo will you quickly just talk about marketing and how it has worked for you and how you've been able to use it for your advantage sure um so i think probably a little bit of a disadvantage at first because it's like in the beginning what I probably did was a little reverse where I'm like I, that, this is what I need to do so I was like pushing the marketing stuff and I really should have been pushing the painting stuff and then bring it together um so what I would say to th those of you at home if you're like an, a beginner work on your painting work on your painting you know so that when you start pushing the marketing and the business side of things the painting can take care of itself. Um, but what I would say is, first of all, make sure your voice is strong in your work um, because people recognize your work um, through this. And otherwise, you find yourself sort of like one piece looks like this person's stuff and one piece looks like that person's stuff. But the more you sort of figure out what you love, you come to a place where you keep uh, practicing that and then your voice becomes strong. So there's that is very important because that's that a great tip. That's a great it, tip. It helps you to stand out because your work looks like you, right? right. And then people start like, oh, the, see, people can see my work and be like, that looks like your work. I knew it before I even saw your name. And that's kind of where you want to get. Um, I don't like to use the term style because I feel like it puts so much unnecessary pressure on us. Like I gotta find my style. Um, I struggled with that and then I sort of like was rebellious, like whatever. I think the most important thing is to figure out what you love. And you do, so if you see a piece of work that you like, the key would be asking yourself, why do I like this work? Is it the color, the texture, the movement, the composition? You know, is it some material? Is it collage that I'm attracted to? And then you pull from that and put it in your arsenal. And you keep building your arsenal based on what do I like? How do you figure that out? Um, you know, curate, even going back to your childhood, like, what did I like? I liked going to the beach. I liked picking flowers. Like, these are things that still light us up. I think we lose them along the way as we grow up. You have to tune into like what really lights up your soul and transfer that onto canvas. So as you curate all these different elements of what you love as an artist, you're going to become an expert in those things um, and how to sort of assemble them into your work. That's what you really should be working towards. Well, I love this and I love this and I love this. Okay, how do I meld them together, right? That's going to be unique to you because nobody else is like you. We're all just... Uh, uniquely created right so that part of it is very important to start off with like making sure you're strong in who you are your work looks like like it comes from your soul and when it when it comes from your soul Sandra I think you don't get tired because it's it lights you up right I, remember, like, I would play I did like alcohol inks and I did all sorts of stuff and I'll be like bored we get bored as creatives easily, <laughs> right? But if you're constantly working on what really is like exciting to you personally, you're never going to get bored. You're just going to elevate like, okay, you know what? I've been doing this. How can I elevate it? But it's all, all going to be from your soul. So there's that. And um, on the marketing side of things, what I would say is, again, making sure you understand why you're in love with your work. Because I think what I see a lot of artists struggle with, honestly, is how to communicate that. Um, you're not trying to sell, right? You don't, I don't sell. Like, I don't, so it's like, guys, come and buy this. And like, no, I just want you to connect to me. I want you to connect to what my inspiration is, which is my faith, which is like, oh, thank you, which is, you know, my culture, my heritage. I want you to connect with something as a mom, whatever it is. I love pattern, I love color. And I want you to be inspired by that. Um, somebody said, can you turn off the comments? I yeah, I want you to be inspired by that. And, um, and then I, I, I want to talk about my work in a way that sort of you can see yourself in it. You can see 
why you're important in my work. So my, my, to me, I see a lot of artists talk about themselves a lot and that's important, right? Because we want people to get to know us to some extent. But when you communicate in marketing, it's really about the person who's reading, who's consuming. So if you're like a, a collector or a potential collector, I want, to, I want to care about you. And so in my work, I want you to find joy. I already have the joy from the process of creating it, but I want you to have a piece of that. Yeah, um, I feel so the exact same way. And, yeah, and so it has to come through somehow. And right. you have to make, create a connection. And, um, but like, how did you grow, for example, your following on Instagram that you, you know, you're fairly new to mm -hmm. painting and all of a sudden you have this huge following. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did you, did you I show up say, every day? Did you post so, every day? Did you? So no, and I had, I had periods of times where it was really hard. I, I went from being a mom of two to a mom of four and I, I had barely had time to paint and, and, and really work on it. But what I would say is, like things like the algorithm, I'm like sort of geeky about stuff like that, to be honest with you, just the marketing side of me. Um, so what I think happens is the algorithm pays very close attention to your behavior. Okay, mm -hmm. so consistency is very important. Um, the combination of these elements. So you have to be consistent. So even if you don't have a, bun a bunch of time and you're just like, I'm going to post three times a week, which I don't post that frequently but i try to be a little bit more impactful when i post now i might have more time in the future and that's okay it doesn't matter how often it matters like being consistent so if i post at 10 a.m on wednesdays i try to stick as close to that schedule as i possibly can and i i remember at one point i noticed for two weeks i was like posting at the same time and i just noticed like my my uh reach was a lot further and I'm like this I, I really sort of honed in like this algorithm is paying so close attention to my behavior so it, it rewards you for consistency um, so I think it's the combination of your work when somebody comes to your page when somebody comes to your account this is where it all begins do you look professional right are you taking yourself seriously because if you don't take yourself seriously Somebody that just happens upon you is just going to be like, eh, eh, you know, move on. But right. the, somebody, you're going to grab somebody's attention right away. They're either going to be not into it, which is fine. Most people are not that come to our pages. But you want the person that's like, ah, oh, this is cool. You want the person that engaging, engaged. You want them to immediately see on your page, oh, this looks, I'm just drawn here. Um, I'm drawn to whatever she's doing and let me find out some more. Let me read some captions. Yeah. So it starts with the visual exactly. has to be in place. So learning how to photograph your work is very important. No, lo knowing how to present it. So I might take beautiful pictures of this piece and it takes up the whole frame of your Instagram box, right? But, and I see a lot of artists, like every photo is like this in the, it takes up the whole frame. But what happens is when somebody comes to your feed, that's a lot to look at. Pretty painting, pretty painting, pretty like, oh, I'm overstimulated. So you have to learn how to mix up the presentation of your work, which takes a little bit of effort. But once you sort of get going with it, it, it comes together. So you need to leave what I call white space, which is, you know, yeah. maybe this is a painting and there's some white there. You know, some of their photos have- Breathing, to breathing space. Breathe through the feed. So your feed is a big part of it. The first one I would say is your work has to be strong. Then how you present your work has to be strong. Then how you talk about your work, how you engage and connect to others has to be strong. Yes. Your consistency has to be there, right? Um, and I- when we talk about like hashtags, my personal strategy is a combination of, let's say on this piece, I'm gonna say something like colorful, vibrant, um, vibrant art, colorful art. It applies to this, right? Specifically. So maybe three or four hashtags would sort of be very specific to this piece. And then I would have another set of hashtags that are a bit more general, like abstract art, contemporary painting, modern right. painting, whatever, um, right. or like women who paint, right? So it's sort of like a little bit more generic. 
yeah. then you absolutely have to have local hashtags. Yes. So for me, that's Dallas artist, Dallas artist, Dallas art, right? Um, if you go check those, you'll see me there because I use them <laughs> frequently. And I almost feel like you're rewarded for being consistent on certain hashtags. You want to mix up a few and every few months sort of mix them up. But I don't personally believe that you have to like every single time you post, have a whole new set of hashtags. I just think it's just a lot of work, one. Yes. And, and I, don't, I, I don't see that it works. Um, Do you use any of the like later grams or any of those no. things? No. I use, uh, no, I am too much of a control freak to um, use any posting. What I use is an app called Planoly. And yes. I use it, the free version, so I can kind of plug in photos, like upcoming posts to see how my feed will look. Yes. But I exactly. still po post very manually from the Instagram app. That's awesome. So, yeah. So I yeah. don't, I don't, yeah, I just, I just don't like anything automated. I just like to know when something's happening and know that I'm available. That's another thing. I try my, sorry, I try my hardest to make sure when I post, I'm actually there. And I come from a business background. My mom is in retail. I look, I think of it like this. If I post and then I go do my groceries, right so i'm not really i'm driving i'm not available to comment i'm sort of like it's like opening your retail store um but if somebody comes in and you're like you went out the back hello <laughs> right so to me um if somebody you know instagram is so stimulating people are just scrolling and um, if somebody stops to say something to me i take it very personally and i want to let that person know that i see you and i thank you right Yes. Um, and so I think that has worked for me because I do treasure every person that takes the time to say something positive or just give some type of feedback on my, on my work. And that has helped me with engagement to sort of just have people more inclined to comment because they probably know I'm going to talk back to them. Right, because right, a right. Lot of like larger accounts, you're like, you just talk to the person. You know, I like, think people get sometimes afraid of like commenting or saying something but yeah I have learned myself that putting myself out of my comfort zone and and asking like I asked you I didn't know you before and I just yeah. literally just say hey Roma how are yeah. you my name is Sandra like would you be yes. willing to come into this I think that when you take that extra step and yeah. you put yourself out there you'll be surprised on how many people will actually respond because yes. like I find myself that my followers are loyal followers mm. and they really have been impacted by this whole project and yeah. they told they tell me about it and I love hearing that you know that I'm doing something doing good and, and you know and that I'm affecting someone in a good way and yeah. I love hearing about it so I will always engage and I will always you know, return an email or return, right. uh, you know, any comment. Right. I, I try to be so present right. um, for that. And, and, and to add to uh, what you're saying and something that came back in the, on the marketing and how you present yourself uh, side of things, there's a lot of information out there about do this, make sure you do that, make sure you do this. At the end of the day, I feel like people smell authenticity. Oh, so yeah. there might be something trending and everybody's doing this. And I, I'm, I'm probably like the last person on to, to, I hardly jump on bag, bandwagons because I just feel like, first of all, I'm like 40 years old. <laughs> and I just feel like there's a reason why there's a blessing in doing this later in life, not later, but midlife, as opposed to being in my twenties. Cause I feel like I can use some discernment. Everything is not for everybody. Okay. 100%. And so is it, is it really authentic to me? Do I feel like this? Um, so it might be a trend for now, but I'm like, I probably want to wait and watch a little bit before I even decide on that. So what you say cannot be like you're talking to the air or a machine, right? <laughs> you, you're talking to that person who at some point might be, you know, they may be saving money to put your work in their home. Um, and so most of the time for me. I'm going to put, sorry, I'm going to put back the comments. Okay. Because we actually, you and I, Roma, will have to have a part two so we can <laughs> show your, um, <laughs> we can show you work um, okay. because we're like five minutes away of okay. uh, finishing our, our um, but that's okay. 
because okay. then we'll have a part two. I'm super That's excited about that. Um, uh, but, you know, talking about, um, and, and here's the time where you guys, if you have questions for Roma, please um, make sure that you ship them out for her. She will be happy to answer. Um, love to be happy. Yes. I yes, uh, love you. that too. It's such a beautiful painting. Um, you know, being authentic and finding your own voice, whatever that is, will make you stand out yeah. and will make you a little different from the one next to you. Yeah. And um, I think that, you know, that each one of us, we're not created the same. We are just very different in how we approach things. So we have that, you know, we have to listen to that sixth sense. What makes me different from the next one? Why right. is my feed, you know, is going to look a little different than, you know, and so you constantly have to be checking yourself yes. and learning new things because the minute that you plateau and you just kind of just stay there, not yeah. a good place to be, right? Yeah. I think, you know, I believe we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And so I believe in embracing exactly who you are and not, not conforming to like, this is what everybody's doing right now. Or everybody's talking about this or, you know, whatever. It's like, stay in your lane, right? Stay yeah. in your lane and be authentically who you are. And you will be rewarded for that. Because I think in this world where, especially on Instagram, everything looks perfect. We all try to make sure that our pictures are crisp. And, but really, things need to com come from your heart. And I try, to, I try to do that. I try to speak when I have something to say as opposed to like, I don't have anything to say, right? And sometimes it's hard. You know, we yeah. don't really always have something to, to say. Thank you. Somebody said, you're, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, every, spe every piece speaks deeply to me. Thank so that's, you. Thank you. You know, and that's, somebody that's what you want, I, right? Yeah. Somebody asked if I, I listen to worship music. So for me, my painting, um, my paintings are really a vessel. They give me an opportunity to like speak about my faith. But my process, my inspiration, my faith, of course, if you look at my stories, you'll see I'm always listening to worship music. And I try to kind of, I want you to feel that. Um, I want you to feel that expression when you look at my work. Um, and even if I'm not having a great day, that process can bring, can lift me up. Um, and so I, 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 I really And I know that, that, that both you and I treat our spaces very sacredly. And so when we get into our space, or at least when I get into my space, yeah. I try to lower the volume of the noise from outside because yes. it is so hard to, to listen to that noise while you're working, right? Yes. So whatever lifts you up, if it's either listening to worship music, to an audible book, to mm -hmm. whatever makes you just be in your zone, meditation, whatever it takes yeah. for you to get to that zone, do yeah. it. Yeah. There's no right or wrong here, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the beauty of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And so um, I, I, I really enjoy, um, you know, when, when you were saying like, you know, you, 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 you actually like pattern on, on, and how you, your mind always went to the pattern and now yeah. it's so visible in all your paintings, right? Yes. Um, so can you give us like three tips for, or a few tips for emerging artists? Um, hmm. I would say um, definitely back to really getting to the core of who you are. It's funny because you think um, it's just painting. It's really not just painting because someone can see beautiful art like in a store, right? In Target or, or Walmart or wherever. We have one minute left. Okay, but um, getting, getting to your own soul like is very important because you wanna be able to translate that. Um, and being true to yourself again and spending the time to discover your voice, I would say absolutely is important. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, you guys. Um, you saw the artwork that is for sale uh, today for $350 um, for Feeding America. I, um, we will have a part two. I know I can listen. <laughs> I can also listen to Roma all the time. And, oh, thank um, you. Thank you, Nell, for showing up. And thank you to everyone that came today and support this and support the Art COVID project. 
And Roma and I are actually going to pair up and do a challenge um, yes. in the future. So stay tuned to that. You can all join this incredible challenge that we're coming up with. And um, I hope you stay um, connected and present in your life and thankful. And just thank you, everyone, so much for being here. Roma, love you. Love you. Thank we'll you for having you me. We'll see you soon, guys. Take, Take care. An awesome job. Bye-bye. Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. Today, Wednesday, um, we have such a special guest, um, Nicholas Wilton, and I'm just gonna wait for a second for everyone to join me today. I'm so excited for Nicholas to be joining us today. He's going to join us from his studio. He's in Northern California and um, he's not only a teacher, a coach, an incredible, incredible artist himself and full of knowledge and uh, can't wait for him to join us today and he is here and I'm going to just bring him in um, and we're just waiting for Nick to accept here and he's joining me any minute. There